Okay, our next one is, I struggle to stay with emotions. And, uh, and also I think, um, I struggle to stay with emotions and wanted help with staying with emotions and reframing uh, why it's a good idea to stay with the emotions. I think the, the greatest thing, and it can be, if you're suffering with depression or huge chronic physical ailments or chronic exhaustion or whatever it is, uh, it can feel like a struggle because it seems like you're not making progress very quickly, like you're sitting there for hours and days and weeks, and it's not all gone yet. And I think the thing, one of the things that helped reframed it and really made me eager to, I mean, it took for the real chronic physical illness three to five years of um, sitting with the chronic symptoms and allowing them and not fighting them and going through waves of acute uh, attacks of various ailments um, and cancelling beliefs. It took three to five years in the beginning of constant work. But what really, really inspired me to go through all of that and all of anyone going through letting go of, of long-standing chronic illnesses or, or chronic emotions like depression will know. Um, it's the, what I heard and I had absolute faith that Hawkins was telling me the truth was that it's finite. You know, you've only got so much repressed feelings and if you allow and don't, you know, carry on in addiction or carry on being in repressed modes, if you keep allowing, you're just emptying out the backlog until you're completely free. And, uh, and all my illnesses left, just allowing all the symptoms to escape. And it took three to five years in my case with uh, severe chronic illnesses like kidney, fa kidney failure, asthma, uh, gout attacks. So it was, it was, as he said, there is a limited amount of these repressed feelings, even though uh, it's understandable for a spiritual seeker to want to go in a few weeks or a few months and to be totally free. But I think the, the great benefit, another benefit I saw of doing years of spiritual work and having absolute faith that it's finite and if you just keep allowing and cancelling whatever it is that you're suffering from, um, is that it does develop. I mean, if you become... Uh, if you become free too easily, I think the ego can sometimes take back control because it's done so easily uh, and go back into its arrogance. So I think when you do a long stretch of spiritual work to become free, it does, bu it does build up the spirit's muscle in a way, in the sense that uh, because you've spent so many hours allowing feelings, they do, it's like consciousness has a capacity to keep allowing without having to do it as a process. Because you're canceling things for so many years, you realize that everything is a limiting belief and you become more and more immune to picking up new limiting beliefs or making sure you don't pick up old ones. So I think that is the thing with, um, with letting go of uh, limiting beliefs. Another great uh, question I had from this questioner was on um, if you're letting go of something and you're talking about it or saying it, um, would it get worse? Like if I'm saying um, I cancel my belief in pain, wouldn't that just make it worse because you're thinking of pain? And I would say potentially it's like um, often when you start to highlight something that's unconscious, like you might be uh, a spiritual seeker may be actually suffering unconsciously from pain or there's a lot of pain in them. So when they start saying, you know, I cancel my belief in pain, it seems like the pain becomes, I would say, more conscious and comes into the forefront and seems just by saying the word pain, it seems to be making it more worse, which it, it seemingly can do in the beginning. But I th what I found with spiritual work, even though it's probably not the answer that many spiritual students would wanna hear, is that as I do the prayers or the counseling beliefs or the, the feeling the feelings, even if it is seemingly a bit more worse in the beginning, as you keep clearing it, it does actually get better. So uh, that's, the, that's what I'd share my experience on rather than the thing of hiding from the words. Um, and they do eventually become neutral and meaningless. So like someone could say the word pain or someone could say the word donut and sugar addiction. And it, it has no, there's no fear of using that word or people doing it, it seems to become meaningless. But there can be initial phrase where uh, someone can be scared of the word sugar or scared of using the word pain. But when you're using it in a powerful spiritual prayer or a canceling belief, for me, it um, seemingly may get a little bit worse in the beginning, but it does, in my experience, if those prayers are powerful and intentionality 
works, it does clear that uh, and make it meaningless in the long run. Okay, I'll stop there.